I have dysphoria. Dysphoria about myself. Ugh. Yeah, I'm a trans person and I have dysphoria. And it kind of sucks, right? Like there are like literally eight different things. In fact, I have like this cute little song. My hair, shoulders, knees, arms, hands, face, symmetry, skin, hair, hair. Like I have a lot of dysphoria. And today I want to talk about how you can think about different ways to navigate dysphoria because yeah, it's gross. And so I guess let's start with what is dysphoria ultimately. I think it's like wanting something that you don't have. Um, and it's something specific about your body um, and something that you would like to change, possibly. Uh, yeah, so you don't like things about your body um, and or even your mind. You can be dysphoric about like the way you think about things or like the approaches that you approaches that you take or maybe you have transphobia yourself and you're a trans person. I mean, I kind of had that very early on. This is way, way back in the day, like uh, back in like 2006. Um, but yeah, it is possible, right? To have like feelings that your either mind or body don't align with where you want to be so um yeah for me like it's definitely been a journey and i can say that you know in the beginning um you're so like focused on even like passing that you just get lost in the fact that there are literally so many things i mean some women uh, are very fortunate and they can step right into it. Uh, for me, I had quite a bit of a journey. So I want to talk about like probably five different things that you can do as you're feeling like a little bit of dysphoria um, and things that worked for me as I went through the transition. So like I look back at my pictures back in 2015, 2016, when I started doing like the social transition and I would still like go out and stuff. And I look at those pictures and I was still like generally pretty comfortable going out in public. And I had like a full beard and I hadn't had any like surgeries performed or anything. So, I mean, I was like wearing a dress in certain, in, in certain environments in like Cincinnati. And um, I was generally okay with it. For sure, I was like thinking about it a lot, but still I was okay with it. So I think that's the first one is like, live in the now, uh, don't wait for this transition period. Uh, sometimes it can take, you know, up to like five years, right? I started in 20, I don't know, I started way earlier, like 2013, took like little baby bincy bincy steps to get where I am. But like I kind of really started getting myself behind it in 2016. So that's like five years, right? So live in the now and still like find people that are comfortable, um, whether it's in your community or online, like there are people that uh, either identify like you or they can kind of lean into you so the second thing is like think about who you're surrounding yourself with especially on like your social media now is like a good time for you to like click the unfollow button on a few people that are maybe a little bit self-absorbed and maybe they're portraying some image of themselves that isn't real, right? And that's really hard, like, because you're seeing somebody else's image of themselves and it's not real. So you're holding yourself to this standard. So you're creating this dysphoria for yourself. So think about the people that you follow. Like maybe it's a good idea to uh, find people who are balanced and maybe they have moments where they're maybe showing up as something else. Like for example, right now I'm in makeup, but as you saw in the early part of the bit video, like there was no makeup and I'm okay being authentic and showing up in a raw form or even uh, something dressed up. So make sure that like you're following people that are real and balanced and do an inventory on yourself. Um, the second thing would be, okay, well, let's say you have like eight things like me, right? Like I just went through them. 
um, you have the opportunity to change them. So put together like a priority list of like what's the most important thing for you and like start working through it. Like each one takes time for sure. So like really think through which ones you wanna prioritize. And I would suggest focusing on the ones that you think are gonna have the most dramatic impact. Like for example, the beard for me was such a like a dead giveaway. And once I got rid of that, like I didn't feel the need to like cake on. So really recommend doing um, electrolysis. <clears throat> or like um, if not even electrolysis like laser I don't think really works as well maybe for some people I've heard a lot of people use it but for me I think the like tried and true way was electrolysis and that was a long time and it took a lot of money to get to that point um, so uh, but be patient again live in the now still enjoy it but know that you're making progress each week towards your goal of where, where, however you want that transition to be. Um, I think the second thing is, is like accept it, right? Like accept aspects that you can't change. Like there are gonna be things in your, where you see other trans women and you're like, damn, I really wish I was like, like that. It's the same, like it doesn't matter if you're trans or a cis woman or a cis man, like you're gonna look at other people. So accept your body at a certain point once you get comfortable um, and really lean into yourself um, and lean into some of your aspects like clearly like my shoulders and my broad chest and like even my hairline like some of these things i can't necessarily change so i'm just gonna accept it right and i'm gonna accept it and move move forward and some things like maybe I have a little dysphoria about, but I'm okay not changing them. And that's all right too. Like there is no clear definition for what a perfect transition or what you should do. So really I think peeling back those expectations around what you should be doing. And maybe that's the sixth thing is like, you maybe watch some TikTok videos or you watch some YouTube videos and people have like these standards that they hold other trans people to. And that's ridiculous. I mean, at the end of the day, if you wanna show up and you wanna have a little bit of lipstick on and a full beard, more power to you. Like there should be no judgment in, especially in our community. Like there should be no judgment on this case. And, and I hate to hear it when I hear other trans people judging other trans people. Um, and, and I think that comes from a level of insecurity for self when somebody's judging somebody else. So, um, and then I think the last thing is, is like, transition is like super about you right like it's about you and that's a problem because the world is so big and there are so many people out there and so many things so like the last piece of advice i'd have is like how can you think about other people other causes and get more involved with that like that would be a good step for you you know is like okay well i've process through all the things that I want to. I've accepted some of them. I'm living my life as I want. And um, and now I'm making contributions either to my community or to the causes that are important to me. And I think that's the greatest thing that we can work towards through our transition. If there were a transition goal, it would be to get to a point where you're comfortable with yourself on a daily basis where you can show up and you can show up for other people around you, whether it's starting a family or uh, adopting or fostering somebody or uh, getting involved with a local charity organization or maybe a church or whatever it might be, like finding that thing that is that brings a lot of meaning that doesn't involve you because that is ultimately, I think, the largest growth opportunity for us uh, transgender non-conforming people is to really step into uh, something greater than us um, and I, and I think that's a really good way to alleviate the pressure that we put on ourselves around the need to transition in that dysphoria that we have so I hope these like five different tips about like living in the now doing the social media inventory 
you know, changing what you can change, accept what you accept what you can't change or you don't want to change and be comfortable with that. And then the last one is start thinking a little bit bigger and think uh, beyond you. And you can do that at any individual point along your journey. So I hope these, a few of these tips helped. Um, I know that dysphoria can be very debilitating like it, it last weekend I was definitely feeling it and I've went through quite a bit of a, my transition journey like I'm kind of towards the tail end of it and I'm still feeling it so um, I feel it significantly less right like maybe it's like once every month or once every other month but still there's a reality that it exists and these are some of the things that I use for myself that help get to that point where it's not a daily thing and it's more of a every other month, maybe I have an instance where I think about that and then I rebase back on some of these other things. Do I want to change it? Can I change it? Can I focus on somebody else and focus on a contribution? So that's all I have today for um, dysphoria. Let me know if there have been any things that you've heard of that have been really successful for you. Um, I think the more that we can kind of share these positive things, I think the more we can create, uh, you know, strong, confident humans, right, at the end of the day. Uh, so yeah, share your comments um, and uh, yeah, have a nice weekend and I will see y'all later.